<laughs> I almost missed the chair that time. Quite literally, when I do miss it, I promise to leave it in the video. Uh, this is what happens when you think about five things at once. You're never fully focused on what it is you're doing. That's why I run into things, and that's why I so badly cut my foot a few hours ago. Of course, there's a nail sticking out from the bottom of the basement stairs, so I got my heel back close against the stairs and cut the heck out of it. You know, I still have a University of Kentucky library card. I go there occasionally. I'm actually able to weed through the books really, really quickly. I can pick up a book I've never picked up before. And within about 30 seconds or less, determine whether the book, and I'm not joking, whether the book's any darn good or not. If it's really good, I'll pause for another 30 seconds. That way I can process a lot of books. However, I've been through them all. I've uh, even, I'm kind of shameful to admit this, but I did resell the book. It's called, um, it's digitized now, thanks to me. It's uh, Inquiry to the Nature of the Human Soul by uh, Andrew Baxter. I bought a copy from, when was it published? 1760 something. I bought it like 20 years ago. I found like a bad copy. You know, it's, it's, it's a really, really old book. I flatbed scanned it in and I made a PDF out of it. Obviously, it was out of copyright, so I assigned it a new ISBN number and put it out there for people to find. It's a really fascinating book. Um, but I made the mistake. We have a really huge bookstore here in Lexington. I haven't been there in like 20 years. And I thought I'd go there. Not been there in 20 years. Like, what happened to Joseph Beth Bookstores? That's the name of the place, Joseph Beth. And I went into Joseph Beth, and it's all a bunch of trash, like little trinkets and doodads and... There's very few books. I know you're thinking, well, well, you can get a lot of books online now. And yes, and I know those sites, and I'm the hugest PDF fan. I'm, I'm a huge PDF creator. I've been a PDF creator, manipulating PDFs, generating PDF, flatbed scanning in books, and converting them to PDF and PDF portfolios, on and on and on. I have the professional version of uh, Adobe, uh, which is uh, DC. But it was just nothing but trash. The philosophy section, of course, is all Western existentialism. I mean, there's like about 30 books. Kant, Hume, Nietzsche, Kierkegaard. I mean, that's not philosophy. Our society is actually de-evolving. I, I was asked, not only recently, but many countless times, like, and I've not thought about this before, or maybe I have, like the top three books. And of course, I always know what someone understands by what they recommend you read. It's not like, what's your favorite thing to read? You know, because it's fascinating. It's well written, like Isaac Asimov or Ray Bradbury or Heinlein. Yeah, he wrote Dune, right? You know, your favorite. I said the wisest, most intelligent stuff. And you can really determine fast what people understand. By standing on the shoulders of giants, you're able to see much, much further. And in that same ilk, by standing on the shoulders of little people, I'm going to say little people. <laughs> standing on the shoulders of little people, we don't see very far. Actually, it's like standing in a hole. Instead of like standing on a little person, it's like crawling in a hole. Books that are so bad, it's like they're, they're, not only are they not educating you, they're actually sucking, sucking the brain out between your ears. I know books like that. Um, have you ever read a book that uh, actually uh, removes your brain out instead of actually filling it with something, making you think deeply about stuff? Uh, unfortunately, that's the case. Anyway, I was asked, uh, what are the top three books that I recommend? I had to think really long and hard about that because I got a lot of, I got the best of the best of the best. There's some stuff that's obviously hidden um, by the Catholic Church. It's buried in the deep uh, archives of the Vatican. Not when Alexandria, the Library of Alexandria burned, there was a copy of much of it already in Italy. As the tale goes, there's many, many tales on that front. How true that is, I don't know. And thinking about that, I came to the conclusion that it's three. And uh, no particular order, however, definitely number one would be Plotinus. The most accurate translation of Plotinus is this. It's Thomas Taylor's, but it's inaccurate. I mean, uh, incomplete, not inaccurate. It's the most accurate translation of the Aeneids of Plotinus. Um, is the most prolific uh, Greek to English translator who ever lived. Is translations are impeccable, but Plotinus was so, so, so tough, and it is, it's like a mystery wrapped inside of an enigma, wrapped inside of uh, a riddle, because you're, and not only is it uh, ancient Greek uh, shorthand, it's ancient Greek philosophical shorthand, 
but then it's ancient Greek philosophical shorthand that uh, is, uh, requires a metaphysical lexicon of emanationism, which essentially nobody has. So even Thomas Taylor failed at it. If I actually had about five years straight, I would do an accurate translation of the Aeneids. I don't know if I'll ever have that chance in my life, but I would like to. A.H. Armstrong's is the best complete translation, but you know I don't fault him for being a Christian. He completely has no idea what emanationism is in his own writings and commentary. He's like, I don't understand this. He even wrote a book on emanationism, which is a rare book, but I have it. It's not too thick. He has no clue. He was just, he's just another academic um, Marx Brothers or uh, one of the Three Stooges. Just, it's like, this guy is a prestigious translator of uh, Greek. It's like, yeah, he is, but he hasn't got a clue what Plotinus is saying. Anyway, number one would be the Aeneas of Plotinus. It actually rearranges your brain. For the same reason, even though I'm against playing games, I'm actually for teaching kids to learn chess. You're actually able to think several moves ahead. It actually develops a skill in your mind that is not developed anymore today. People are reactive like animals, unfortunately. They don't actually say, well, if I do that, then that will happen, then that will happen. I mean, people need to have that skill. And none of that stuff is taught in high school or college or elementary school. It's not. That's so incredibly unfortunate. So the number one would be the Indians of Plotinus. So we've got three book collections in total. Number two would be the Pitophysian by John Scotus Erigena. Sorry, I didn't bring that out here. That's Pitophysian, P-E-R-I-P-H-Y-S-E-O-N. John the Scot or John Scotus Erigena, Pitophysian. I've had, and this is not an exaggeration, no less than a thousand people tell me that they've read that off my recommendation. They said, wow, uh, not only read it, I read it again. John J. O'Meara's translation is the best. He didn't translate all of the books, but most of them. They said, wow, this is transformational. You know, I should have read this and like spend four years in college. I'm able to think more clearly, lucidly now. They've turned into like uh, the human version of a Vulcan. You know, hyperlogical, you're able to process information and see it for what it is. Like, well, that doesn't follow, you know, necessitatively what you're saying would uh, abduct back to something else that is completely different that you're actually putting forward as being the root cause of the problem. You know, like that. People don't think like that anymore. It's the reason why society, one of the reasons why society is de-evolving. So the Pitophysian is number two. First being Plotinus is Indians, the second being the Pitophysian. The third would be this. This is uh, Universal One by Walter Russell. It has a lot of diagrams in it. And uh, I digitized this work. Have you heard of Walter Russell? It's like, are you kidding me? I, I digitized this book and put it out there for people. Really, really incredible. Now, you do have to understand some of his... He speaks in terms of... Uh, instead of saying centripetal, he'll use uh, uh, north-south. In terms of talking about centrifugal divergence, you know, contraction, oblation of the toroidal f uh, field force of magnetism, he'll say east-west. So he, he has his own lexicon on certain things. If you can actually see through his lexicon, east-west just means for reference to centrifugal divergence. North-south, he's talking about centripetal convergence. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, do I consider him fault faultless? No, absolutely not. He never defines a field. Um, he did not understand uh, electricity specifically. He did not understand electricity versus dielectricity or electrostatics. He did not. There's no proof of that whatsoever. That's okay. Nobody's perfect. I mean, Plotinus is not perfect, but nearly so. Top number one pick would be the works of Plotinus. Um, there's uh, his other book by Walter Russell, which I also digitized, which is, uh, I can't think of it off the top of my head, even though I have several copies of it. He also has a Divine Iliad, but uh, uh, it's about uh, the universe, something, something, the universe. You know, I'm able to remember every book. For some reason, i got a brain, a brain block right now. But anyway, it's The Universal One by Walter Russell. You can find digital copies of this everywhere, thanks to me. Walter Russell. If you actually slowly study this, you'll actually have... Um, Nikola Tesla commented when Walter Russell... I think it was this book that was sent to Nikola Tesla 
And Nikola Tesla said something to the fact that this is too advanced for most people. You need to bury it in a tomb or something for 5,000 years. I don't know how accurate that quote is, but apparently uh, Walter Russell did send this to uh, Nikola Tesla. Either that or it was a divine alien, but I think it was the universal one, but I could be wrong on that one. I don't know which specific work Walter Russell sent to Nikola Tesla. By the way, I certainly don't take credit for, I do on many of the aspects of light, which even Walter Russell didn't mention, but Walter Russell did state, he was the first that I know of, that light does not travel, light does not have a speed. And a superficial mind today, especially an atomist, i.e. a materialist, so it's just ridiculous. What kind of stuff was this guy smoking, Walter Russell? Of course light travels, it's speed, it's moving. It's photons. <clears throat> None of that is the case. But the one thing Walter Russell does say is light is, does not travel. And he's accurate about that. Nikola Tesla was more accurate by saying light was nothing other than a sound wave in the ether. To that effect, uh, Nikola Tesla is correct. Because a sound wave is not an emission, it's a perturbation of the medium, i.e. the nitrogen and oxygen of the air. So these are my top three picks for a mind that is to be sharpened. Yeah, rather than dulled, as in the case of academia and college and high school, blah, 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 blah. You want your mind dulled, just listen to those academicians, which I give no credit for, no allowance to understanding of natura naturans or Mother Nature. Number one being the Ineasable Tinus, number two being the Periphysian of John the Scott or John Scotus Erigena. Pick, take your pick, same person. Periphysian, P E R I. P H Y S E O N. Pedophysian. There are various websites, specifically Russian ones, where books can be had. Pedophysian. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions. I actually like the fact that I'm able to recommend good stuff because, like I said, the Joseph Beth bookstore is not like some little dumpy bookstore. It's huge, it's two stories, it's enormous. Bookstores are just a thing of the past. Nobody goes to libraries anymore, and you go to a bookstore, there's nothing there but garbage. Nobody can learn anything anymore. There is no desire to know. People are not information sponges. They don't want to know. They just want to, what can I get me? What can I get me richer, drunker, happier? You know, just, I think the whole world, instead of, you know, having the divine uh, desire for uh, noble insights and wisdom, you know, they're, they're wanting to know where the quickest place for a, a, a back rub and a pina colada is. <laughs> uh, not that I'm against that at all. <laughs> Actually, I am. I don't drink alcohol, but... Um, nobility is transcendent to this life. It is before it, and it's above it, and it is absolutely after it. You know? All this stuff, this computers and the toys and the garbage you have, you're not going to take it with you when you go. Neither am I. You need to be start uh, becoming a prepper, if you will, of things. You know, people prep, they, they store stuff away. You know, like a squirrel st stores his acorns away in the tree. Yeah? You need to be storing away what is transcendent to the psychophysical corpus that you see before you. And your own. That's the best advice I could give anybody. And it is completely undeniable. Nobody could say something is better than wisdom. And you say, you know, what's the most important thing in the world? I would say wisdom. You see, that's the one thing that nobody can, you can't say, well, no, this is better than wisdom. <laughs> nobody can say something's better than wisdom. If you say anything is better than wisdom, by definition, you're, uh, you're pronouncing foolishness. Because <laughs> there is nothing better than wisdom. That's the one thing where you can make a declarative statement that is 100% irrefutable by anybody. Nobody can say it. They might attempt it, but it's like, you can't say something's better than wisdom. What's wrong with you? <laughs> within these pages are not wisdom, any of these pages. What is within them is the keys to access the insight, the knowledge, the metaphysics, the transcendental principles of what is above, beyond, under, and behind the psychophysical, the corporeal, you know, this world of mirage, illusions, and holograms. Yeah. Because none of this stuff is real. Things are more fake now than they ever were before. Yeah. You have, like, uh, you know, some old, bald dude, not meaning, <laughs> you know, pretending to be, 
you know, upload a fake image, uh, you know, and he, he presents himself as something entirely different. People are living, you know, these lives of delusions. There was a Bruce Willis movie about that. What was it called? Surrogates, where everybody's asleep at their home and they're they're neurally linked to this uh, synthetic robot that is like the perfect version of themselves. You know, it's like really beautiful and they're all robots. So the whole world is asleep in their beds at home, but they're neurally linked to these robots that are walking around and interacting with everybody. Nobody wants to like see each other in real life in the real world. That's the way this world is going. They're trying to invent another layer of lies. This is enough lies already, but everybody wants another layer of lies. That's that's why we got this digital footprint online. You know, we present this false image of ourselves. Yeah. You need to be going the other direction. That's foolishness. Anyway, these are my recommendations. I hope you like it. Sorry I've been so insanely busy lately, but I've, this has been the th busiest three or four days of my life. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.